Okay, I guess now you can hear me and um, I'm going to answer all of your questions one by one. I was trying to simultaneously broadcast to YouTube and Facebook at the same time, but I think there is some issue with YouTube because of which I could not do it. Um, so let me do it from here now. So I'm only doing broadcast on YouTube right now. If anyone is uh, waiting for me um, to watch the live streaming from Facebook, then I'm sorry that I have not been able to do it now. Maybe because I did not know how to do it or maybe or maybe because of something else. Uh, but anyway, we'll just do it from here. And you have already asked me a few questions. So I'll try to answer all of those questions one by one. Starting with the question of Samiksha, who has asked me, does writing more than the limit deduct a score? So I think what she's trying to ask is, what happens if someone writes more than the um, allowed limit of words in writing? And that means in summarized written text, in um, AC writing, as well as in summarized spoken text. In all of these three question types, there is a limit of words. In summarized written text, you can write 5 to 75 words. In AC writing, you can write 200 to 300 words. And in summarized spoken text, you can write um, 50 to 70 words. So you have to make sure that your answer is within the limit all the time. Because in summarized written text, you have one point for that. In AC writing, if you write between 200 to 300 words, you get two points. And similarly, in summarized spoken text, you have two points for length again. So be careful about this because this is a very simple criteria, very easy criteria and you might lose points if you are not careful about this scoring criteria. The second question we have is from Murli and his question is, <coughs> sorry, can you give good tricks to do describe image? Now Murli in describe image, the most important thing for you to do is to get as maximum score as possible from fluency and from pronunciation do not worry too much about content because for the content part even if you just read what is on the screen you will get full points so your main your main emphasis should be on getting high score in fluency and high score in pronunciation for fluency if you want to get high score do not hesitate at any time even if you make any grammatical error if you make any mistake then just ignore the mistake and keep speaking because that's the most important thing for you to get highest score in fluency. Regardless of what you have learned in the past about fluency or whatever your impression is regarding fluency, in this exam, fluency only means your ability to speak without interruption. Okay, and then regarding pronunciation, just make sure that you can pronounce most of the words used in graphs and images and you know how to pronounce them clearly without any issues. The next question is from Gagandeep and her question is, my test is on 15th of May. So Gagandeep, if you have any question, you can also write the question. Uh, and yeah, the question is... Please let me know about what is the most important thing to do now. So any one of you who has your test coming up in the next week, start practicing the four most important questions for your exam. And these questions are in the order of importance, right from dictation. This is the most important question. Practice as many right from dictation questions as possible. This is also one of those few question types in your exam where questions repeat from the past papers. So make sure that you have practiced all the past questions as well. And when you are practicing, make sure that you can spell the words because that's one area where most of the people lose the score. Followed by right from dictation, the next important question is read aloud. The reason this question is important is it affects your speaking as well as reading and carries a lot of points, which can be sometimes 23 to 30 points. It's important for your speaking score. It's important for your reading score. The third question you should practice if your exam is coming up is reading and writing fill in the blanks. This question is one of the toughest questions in your exam. And this is also quite challenging question because 
Um, it's not that easy to answer the question if your vocabulary is not that good. And if you have only one week left, I don't think it's possible for you to improve your vocabulary. So rather than focusing on your vocabulary, practice the past questions because this is one of those few questions where 70 to 80 percent of the times you get the same question which were asked in the previous exam. And the last question type is retail lecture. If you want to get higher score in retail lecture, just focus on your fluency more than on your pronunciation. Remember, this will help you to get your get better score in speaking. But at the same time, if your pronunciation is not that good, then you might lose a score in listening. If you do not have any issue with listening, then in that case, just focus on fluency so that you can get high score in retail lecture. If you, sorry, I was talking about repeat sentence. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't mean to say retail lecture, by the way. So if you have any problem, then uh, then only uh, if you have any problem in listening, then only worry about your pronunciation. If you have always been getting good score in listening, then don't worry much about pronunciation. Just focus on fluency, and also don't worry about the content because most students cannot remember the full sentence, and despite that, they can get good score as long as they can speak fluently. So that was. Gagandeep's question. Rasbir has a question here. So let me answer that one. Speaking fluency problem. So I think what she is trying to ask is what to do about fluency. Regarding fluency, you have to do two things. First, learn a template and then practice it as many times as you can. While practicing the template, make sure that you can pronounce all the words used in the template without any issue. In order to find out if the computer will have any problem with your pronunciation or not, try any speech-to-text software. If a speech-to-text software can identify all the words used in your template, then you are safe. You can go to the exam and then use that template and you will not lose any score in your pronunciation. The second step of getting high score in fluency is practicing the template multiple times so that you do not hesitate while using the template. In your exam, when using the template, if you can't remember or can't use any word to complete the template, then just repeat the template. Just keep repeating the template until you can use the words from the recording. This way you will not lose any score in fluency and because of that you'll get very nice score in speaking. Now, Theoretically speaking, speaking is not just about your ability to speak fluently. It should have content, it should have good pronunciation and so on. But in this exam, because of the way they have designed this software, as long as people speak without an interruption, they get excellent score. So your target should be getting good score in the exam by improving your fluency. And for that, try to speak without as less interruptions as possible. Now the next question is from Chintu and the question is like this. My friend skipped two repeat sentences and is still got 19 speaking. But does it impact on listening score because of the contents? Or you still can get perfect 19 listening as well. So Chintu, the answer to this question is, there is a very short answer to this question and the answer is yes. Even if you skip two questions in repeat sentence, you can easily get full score in listening. And I'm telling you this not because of anything else other than my own experience. Because in one of my exams where I was experimenting with the idea of speaking the, skipping the sentence, I did the same thing. I skipped two repeat sentence questions because I wanted to see whether uh, it is true or not. And what I found was, even in that exam, I scored 90 in all the four sections. There was no problem with my score. So from this, what I understood was, PT actually looks at your overall performance rather than your performance in one particular question. What that means is, let's say that if in one question, I did not do that well because of some distractions or any problem, but in the rest of the questions, I did extremely well then in that case I can still get maximum possible score and at the same time what I also understood from this is if I get too worried about one particular question type only it might make me nervous in the exam and because of that I might not get the score 
that I'm looking for. So in your exam, if you make one mistake, if you make occasional mistakes here and there, don't get too much worried because everybody makes these kind of mistakes. And uh, the only thing is whether or not you can continue after that. So if you face some situations like that in the exam, just remember what I've just told you, ignore that mistake and move on. It's very rare for people to lose a score in the exam just because of one mistake in one question. In fact, the whole idea of PT is to look at your overall performance rather than how you did in one specific question. Now, I have another question from Fiona. And the question is, in answer sort question, if I don't know the answer, what should I say? In writing essay, could I leave a blank line between paragraphs? So we have two questions here. One is from speaking section, answer short question. So let me answer that question first. In answer short question, if you do not know the answer, no matter what you say, you will not get points. So that means if you do not answer the question correctly, you will not get points for speaking. But what I have also found is people who tend to speak something and answer short question, especially if they repeat the question, they tend to get full score in both speaking as well as in listening. Now, let's discuss this part a little bit. Answer short question affects your performance in both speaking as well as in listening. In this question, you get three points for speaking and around six points for listening. Or in other words, this question is more important for listening than for speaking. So the question is, why is it more important for listening than for speaking? Because you have to listen more, but you speak less, since you can also answer the question in one word. That is the reason why, if you lose a score in answer short question, the impact will be more on listening than on speaking. So what should I do if I have understood the question, but I do not know the answer? How can I tell the examiner that I have understood the question, it's just that I don't know the answer? The easiest way to do that is to repeat the question, because that means you have understood the question. And since you don't know the answer, you simply click next and go to the next question. So what happens? If you do this in three questions, let's say, in that case, there will not be any impact. You will lose one point in speaking if you do not answer four answer short questions or each answer short question carries only around 0 0.25 points because there is no partial scoring like that that means 0 0.25 what happens is if you answer four questions you get one point so this is just a rough estimate based on my experience and what it means is you should not worry if you can't answer a few questions but if possible you can try to repeat the question itself the second question here is, in writing essay, could I leave a blank line between paragraphs? Yes, you can do that. Paragraphing actually helps the system to understand your layout and organization of the essay and for that you get two points. So it's a good idea to leave a space between two paragraphs. So I hope this answers your question, Fiona. If not, you can still write in the comments and I'll keep answering your questions. The next question is from Dennis and the question is like this. In a speaking retail lecture, I speak for 20 to 25 seconds using templates. How can I increase the duration? So for this, Dennis, you have to think about your speed. If you speak too fast, you might finish the template too early. Speaking too fast also means less clar clarity of your answer. And if that happens, you know that you are likely to lose a score in pronunciation. Those of you who feel that you are speaking less clearly or too fast, then in that case, you have to reduce your speed. Otherwise, you do not need to um, play with your speed. You do not need to do anything with your speed. But only if you feel like your speed is too fast or too slow, in that case, you can change it. 20 to 25 seconds still is not bad because the ideal length of answer should be 25 to 35 seconds so you are still very close so maybe if you slow down a little bit or if you in, uh, include more keywords in your answer you will easily cross the 25 seconds threshold so for you dennis my suggestions would be first if you think you speak fast reduce your speed second look at the number of keywords in your answer 
and if you feel that you have you you are using fewer keywords then try to increase the number of keywords in your answer so that your answer can be longer i hope that answers your question let's go to the next question now So this is from Harshid and Harshid is asking in summarized written text can be summarized through right from first two line and last two line of paragraph. So basically this will not have any impact on your content score because in content path they are just trying to see how many keywords you have been able to include from the paragraph. But my suggestion for this would be if you are planning just to get some sentences from the passes without changing them at all then try to take one sentence from the beginning one sentence from the middle and one sentence from the end because this way you'll be able to cover the whole content of the passes and that way your scoring content will also be better then you have to think about three other criteria they are form the grammar and vocabulary in order to get one out of one in form make sure that your answer is in one word sorry one sentence and there are no accidental full stops anywhere in the middle of the sentence because sometimes i've seen this while checking your answers in mock test i found some students using full stop in the middle of the sentence and when i asked them personally why did you do that they told me that that was accidental they were actually not aware that they had used full stop there and it can happen because if you look at the keyword arrangement then you will find that the full stop is actually very close to comma so maybe they were trying to use comma and accidentally they put full stop there and since they did not edit their work it may have happened so if you want to avoid avoid some uh, sit, uh, same situation in your exam then be careful and make sure that you have enough time left for your editing you get extra four points if you do not make any mistakes in grammar and vocabulary so altogether in summarized written text you have seven points which come from content two points length of form one point grammar and vocabulary each two points and total seven points out seven points for one question so that is for summarized written text then from chintu again how many words we need to reply in retail lecture? I mean to get full marks towards listening. Is it okay? Five to six words from content? Five to six will be two less. I suggest you try to use at least 15 keywords or more than 15. Then you'll have good score for your content as well as good score for your listening. Because in five to six words, you cannot capture most of the keywords from the recording. Your target here is to get as many keywords as possible if you are struggling to get enough keywords in retail lecture the trick here is from every sentence try to write down at least one word and you'll get enough words enough keywords for your answer Then from Samiksha, how can we score above 65 in writing? If you are looking for more than 65 in writing, you must start your preparation with write from dictation. If you do not make any mistakes in write from, mistake, uh, write from dictation, then you can get up to 30 points from write from dictation. Once you get 30 points from write from dictation, your next target should be the other two easy but important questions, which are summarized written text and summarized spoken text. If you follow the tricks that we have just discussed or that I have mentioned in our channel in some other videos, then you will be able to get 20 points from those two questions. So 30 plus 20 will be 50 points. Now you have only 15 points left and it's not that difficult to get those 15 points because 7 points you can get from filling the blanks as long as you do not make any spelling errors or grammar errors. Then you have AC and fill in the blanks reading and writing left. Now, see, you have two important questions left. Together, these two important questions carry up to 40 points and you just have to get around 7 points out of 40, which is extremely easy. 
So if you follow this method, what you can see is even if you are not that good in fill in the blanks reading and writing, even if you can't write a good essay, you can still score 65. You just have to be strategic. This is the, a personalized plan for those students who struggle with fill in the blanks reading and writing because of their limited vocabulary. You have to focus and write from dictation, fill in the blanks, and to summarize a written text and summarize spoken text questions. Okay. So this is the question from Just Kiran. And she's asking, I took the test and I got 19 in speaking, but 64 in reading. I remember that I was mumbling in some read aloud questions because I couldn't read properly. Did that affect my reading? It's quite possible because read aloud is an extremely important question for reading. If we look at the score we get in reading, then we can see that around half of the score in reading, that means around 45 points in reading come from only two question types and they are read aloud and fill in the blanks reading and writing. If you struggle in these two questions, it becomes difficult to get desired score in reading, especially if you are looking for more than 79. If you are looking for 65 and above, it is still possible with a little bit of uh, manipulation of the strategies. But if you are looking for 79, you have to be good in these two questions. So just kidding, for you, I think the most important thing would be to make sure that you can pronounce the most frequently asked words in read aloud and also make sure that you are good in fill in the blanks reading and writing. As long as you take care of these two parameters, I mean these two areas, you should be fine in the next test. The next question is from Noshin. And her question is, in repeat sentence, in case I just remember 50% of the sentence, sentence, should I just speak 50% of the sentence or should I complete the sentence grammatically with some other words? Um, in this case, my answer is if you complete the sentence grammatically with other words, it will not increase your score at all, but it will help you to speak more fluently. Because what I have found is when people do not have anything to say, they start stammering and they start thinking. In both the cases, either their fluency will go down or because of stammering and because of nervousness, their pronunciation becomes less clear. So if you just make a habit of completing the sentence anyway, even if that means using some words from your side, your fluency will get better and your pronunciation will get better. Your content only depends on the number of words you can repeat in the correct sequence. So the content score will not change, but fluency and pronunciation will improve. And what we know is fluency and pronunciation together carry 10 points, but content carries only three points. And if you can remember 50% of the content, then that means two points anyway. So you can get 12 out of 13. So completing the sentence anyway, even if you don't remember the actual content, is a good idea to improve your score in fluency and pronunciation. And I highly recommend it. The next question is from Gurvinda. I'm using template in writing because without this, I'm not good to score in daily exercise. But what what should I do to get 70 plus a score? Okay, Gurbinda, in writing, uh, I think you are using template in maybe essay writing or summarized written text, and that's good. But you have to remember that your writing score actually comes from, mostly comes from write from dictation and fill in the blanks reading and writing. Um, sorry, sorry, I just messed up because I got distracted here. What I'm trying to say is in writing, if you want to get good score, you have to focus more on the most important questions of writing. And these questions are the first important question of writing is write from dictation. And the second important question is fill in the blanks reading and writing. So you should focus in these two questions and don't worry too much about the other questions where you can use template. Even if you get template 50% correct, you will get the score you are looking for because template will increase the number of words and will help you to meet that criteria and at the same time it will also help you to get a score from vocabulary and spelling and grammar as well so maybe in the content because of what you write you might lose a score but as long as your template is good enough you'll get very nice score so that means by using template you can leave the worry of questions like summarize written text summarize spoken text and essay writing 
then focus on important questions like write from dictation and reading and writing fill in the blanks so this is i think your first question and you have second question here if we are not give focus in grammar and repeat sentence can we lose the score no the Pearson scoring criteria only looks at three factors and they are your fluency pronunciation and your content and regarding content the only criteria they have is you should be able to repeat the sentence in the same order as the speaker said so that means let's say that I can repeat 50% of the sentence in the same order and the rest of the things I said do not make any sense even then I'll get a score so grammar has nothing to do with it in fact those students who worry too much about grammar tend to speak with a lot of interruptions and because of that lose the score in fluency. So remember, your main aim here is to speak as fluently as possible and that sh that's what you should try to do. Then we have next question here. If I get very difficult read aloud exam, then is it okay to skip words in that passes? How many words maximum I need to skip in each read aloud? Okay, the answer to this question is if you have some difficulties, you can skip a few words without much penalty. And in one question, depending on the number of words in that text, you can skip around 5% of the total number of words. So that means if I have, let's say, a paragraph with around 60 words, then I can easily skip around three words without any penalty. So if you feel that you are not able to uh, pronounce all the words in the text, then in that case, you can skip a few words. And it's a good idea to improve your score in fluency or to maintain your score in fluency. Okay, the question here is, it's not good if we use double space in writing by mistake. It's not much of a problem, so don't worry if it happens. In fact, focus more on spelling errors and grammatical errors. Spacing itself will not cause that much problem. If you don't have a space between two words, then it can be a problem. Because in that case, the words will get, um, it's like um, you are right, if you write two words together, then it it will look like a new word for the computer and you lose a score in either maybe um, in grammar or maybe in a spelling so you have to make sure that there is a space between two words but if for some reason you have two space then you don't need to worry about that And the next question here is from um, Burke and he's asking, I would like to get 65 plus. What should I do and how can I improve my grammar and vocabulary level? Thank you. Okay. Um, if you want to get 65 plus, first thing is you have to know which question types are important for your exam and for your target score rather than practicing all the questions because there are 20 types of questions. If you try answering all of those questions or if you spend equal time on all of those questions, you will miss the point here. I mean, you will miss uh, the main aim of this exam. In this exam, what Pearson is saying is there are some skills which are more important than the others. And based on that, you'll be getting the score. So for people who are looking for 65 plus, your target should be answering those questions which are very important plus important questions. And if you want to get a detailed description of this, then you should watch my another video where I have discussed the questions which you should answer if you are looking for 65 plus. Uh, if I start discussing that one more time here, it will take me almost 20 minutes to do that. So I'll skip that for now, but uh, there is a video I have already made and I highly suggest that you go and watch that video on our channel. It will help you to um, get a, a strategy for your target score. And if it still does not help, then you can get in touch with us and we'll try to help you as much as we can. Our next question is from Bishal and the question here is listening summary. I can't catch content. Please give me template add only some word. So I think what Bishal is trying to ask is if I don't, um, if I can't catch enough words from the recording, can I just use a template which has most of the words with only a few words missing? Yes, it can help you if you are only looking for 50 plus 
and in some cases 65 plus as well but not if you are looking for 79 and above because you at least need a few keywords if your target score is high but for 50 and 65 plus this can help and you can try this strategy because for many of our students who aim for 50 plus or 65 plus we do the same thing we just give them the template with maximum number of words already in the template and they just have to get a few words from the recording which helps them to complete the template and get the score next question is from dennis and the question is about reading section in reorder paragraph and fill in the blanks i'm scoring 80 to 85 percent correct how can i reach 100% first thing Dennis in reader paragraph don't aim 100% because it's almost impossible unless you get the same question twice and for your information even students who score 90 were not able to get every question correct all the time so in reorder paragraph if most of the times you get 100% correct even that is more than enough otherwise 90% accuracy is enough for reading questions both in fill in the blanks as well as in reader paragraph since you mentioned that you have reached around 80 to 85 percent now i would suggest that you go a little extra and make it 90 percent and then don't worry too much after that because sometimes your desire for perfection can make it overly stressful for you and that's not something you want so dennis if you can cross 90 percent you are ready for more than 79 in reading reading And from Kiso, can I use the same template for retail lecture and summarize spoken test text? So yeah, you can use the same template because these are two different questions into different sections and they are not going to affect each other. If you find it easier to use the same template in both retail lecture and summarize spoken text, you can do that. In fact, that's exactly what we do in our center. We give the same template with, a, with just a little bit of changes in summarized spoken text so that it becomes a little more formal because retail lecture is a speaking question. Speaking is usually semi-formal or informal and summarized spoken text is a writing question and it's mostly formal. And that's why we have just made small changes. Otherwise, both the templates have almost the same structure and same wording and you can also do the same thing. all right Deepak has a question with a detailed description of his score as well and his score in listening is 73 writing sorry reading is 79 speaking is 84 writing is 67 grammar 84 and fluency 79 pronunciation 73 spelling 19 and vocabulary 82 written discourse 48 previous attempt listening 83 reading 70 speaking 87 writing 73 grammar 90 fluency 81 pronunciation 74 um, spelling 65 vocabulary 90 and written discourse 78 so looking at this score it looks like you're mostly losing your score because of your uh, spelling because once your spelling score is just in the previous one it's just 19 and in the next one also it's 65 now regarding a spelling it's actually quite interesting because spelling itself is assessed directly on only two question types they are summarize spoken text and essay writing these are the only two questions where you get points for your spelling in all other questions spelling is indirectly assessed that means you don't get any extra points for not making a spelling error but if you make a spelling error you lose points if you didn't understand what i just said later on you can just pause the video and think about it but that uh, what that means is you do not need to get overly stressed about a spelling except in two question types these two question types are fill in the blanks and write from dictation. Your spelling is not directly assessed in these two questions, but you don't get any points until your word is correctly spelled. And write from dictation is one of the most important questions in your exam. 
If you look at the score here, you can see that listening score is 73 when spelling score is 19. But listening score is 83 when spelling score is 65. So it looks like Deepak may have made some errors while typing the words in right from dictation. Another thing, another pattern you can notice here is if you compare his writing score, then also you will find some changes. When his score in, was 73 in listening, his writing score was 67. But when his score in listening became 83, his writing score also increased to 73. So it looks like he's losing his score mostly in write from dictation. That is one possibility. Another possibility is his reading score. That means he's reading and writing fill in the blanks. That is another question type where he may have been losing his score. So if you focus on these two questions, that is reading and writing fill in the blanks and write from dictation, you have a greater chance of getting the score you are looking for. All right, now I'm moving to another question here. Can I use hyphen? It is considered as a spelling error or not. Hyphens are not considered a spelling error, especially if you are using them in the right place. Hyphenated words are counted as one word, not two words. So let's say you are doing summarized written text, maximum word limit is 75, and you have used one hyphenated word. Then in that case, those hyphenated words will not be counted as two words. So if you can try this yourself as well, when you are typing in, uh, let's say Google Docs or Microsoft Word, if you hyphenate the word, any two words, any two random words, the word count will decrease by one. You can try this yourself as well. Okay, let's try another question now. So this is from Mamta and the question is how to increase grammar scores. What tasks directly affect grammar score? So again, grammar is evaluated in only three question types directly. And these questions are summarized written text, essay writing and summarized spoken text. If you, your score in grammar is less, then you have to look at these three scores. I mean, these three question types. And the next thing is because in all these three question types, we often tend to use templates, check your template and make sure that you have understood the template if you are using any kind of template. And if you feel like maybe there is some issue with the template, then speak with your tutor and ask their help to make sure that you can use the template in the same way they want you to use. I hope that answers your question. If the question was about how to improve your grammar, then the answer is completely different because the general English grammar is a completely different thing and requires a lot of time to improve as compared to the grammar score in PT. If we use backspace to correct any word, that can affect my score or not. I think that's what Harshid is trying to ask. Not at all. Backspace has nothing to do with your score. I know in some of the places people are saying this that if you use backspace you will lose a score in a spelling and that is completely not true and i can challenge that notion at any time because i myself is a very uh, i'm a very poor typer um, and i can't type words that well so whenever i type words i have to use backspace all the time so i consider myself a poor typist but regardless i have a score 90 all the time even in spelling so i don't think this this opinion has any footing at all and it's not based on any kind of evidence i think this was just someone's guess and you uh, i think one of the reasons this this rumor may have spread is because some people may have said that i used backspace and i didn't get the score some people may have said that i didn't use backspace and my score changed but that can happen at any time and it can just be a coincidence so this is not true and don't waste your time on this particular thing because it's not going to help you much For 79 plus, can we use template? Yes. No matter what your target score is, you can always use template. 
The only difference between people who use the same template but get different score is their ability to use the template. It's just template is just a tool. The tool itself cannot determine what will be the outcome. The tool is just something that makes the work easier. But what you can create with that tool depends on how good you are with the tool. So template can be useful for any score because with template it takes less time to answer questions as long as you learn how to use the template or change the template according to the situation you will get whatever you are looking for now chin Tu has a question because of ai lastly i heard that sequence matter the most in write from dictation you have to write complete in order is it right i'm not sure what is your opinion okay so this is not true at all and again the reason for this is if you go to pearson's latest score guide version 14 they have clearly mentioned that you will get a score based on the number of words you got right from this from the recording they have not even mentioned sequence there you can check it yourself so what we can deduct from that is as long as the words you have written in your sentence are the same as the words uh, in the recording you'll get points for that and you don't have to write the complete sentence to get your score so Murli has given a suggestion here shift left arrow to select and change your sentence this is not true and please do not follow this because you don't have to do this you don't have to select and delete you can use backspace as much as you like and it will not affect your score and if anyone can prove otherwise i will actually pay for your exam if you can prove this to me and gurvinder has a question here i'm losing my score in spelling it's my big problem so the simple solution to this is download the list of 570 academic words and practice their spelling this will cover 90 percent of the words you will have to write and you will get over your problem if you just practice the spelling of any random words then it's not going to help you much simply because there are millions of words in, in english and no one can spell all of them so you have to be quite specific with your problem and just practice the words which are likely to come in your exam maruti's question is can i use the same template across all describe image questions yes you can do that your answer is compared against the answer stored in the database so what you answered in the previous question does not matter because your answer is not compared against your previous answer i hope this answers your confusion The notion has a question here is grammar evaluated in describe image or retail lecture if by mistake I speak grammatically wrong sentence will it impact my score in speaking okay not at all I've seen many 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 candidates who cannot speak a grammatically correct sentence and despite that have been able to score 90 out of 90 one of the possible reasons for this is Pearson is focusing more on fluency and pronunciation and for the content part they're just looking at the overall idea rather than grammar the overall idea which is relevant to the question asked so minor grammatical errors i think they are overlooking and because of that people do not lose a score even if their grammar is not perfect in fact if you if you start going after grammatical perfection it will reduce your fluency it will make you interrupt yourself with correction all the time and overall your speaking will be less impressive in fact if you listen to any native speaker who speak really nicely even they make a lot of grammatical mistakes so in speaking the main emphasis is on content that means what you have want to say and fluency and pronunciation which means how do you say it rather than grammatical accuracy minor grammatical errors can be ignored are ignored in your exam so just focus on your presentation more than on your grammar and Noshin has again mentioned that uh, she gets nervous when she speaks grammatically wrong sentence and that's quite understandable because in our countries especially in those countries where 
English is taught in schools, we are taught English speaking or writing with the help of English grammar. But if you think about how natives learn English speaking, then perhaps you can all notice that they just learn it by practice rather than by learning grammar. So language most of the times for the native speakers is just something they learn when they are growing up from their environment and from their friends and family. That is the reason why most of the native speakers cannot even tell you the grammatical rules that you perhaps you know better than them. So focus more on your idea and its presentation. And yes, initially you will find it a little difficult because your tendency will be correcting yourself when you make mistake. But if you keep this thing in mind, then it will get better with time. Another way to do this is try to watch speeches of some of the famous people and then try to note the mistakes, grammatical mistakes they make. When you find that even these best speakers in the world make mistakes that you also do, then you will feel perhaps a little bit comfortable with this. And you will start worrying less about grammatical errors yourself. So there is another question now from Dennis. And Dennis is asking that, does Pearson mock test or mock test at Roman PT portal resemble the same score in actual test? Pearson's mock test, because it is designed by, by Pearson, uses the same algorithm as they use in the exam. Um, and what I have seen is usually people tend to score more in the actual exam than what they get in the mock test. What that means is if you score, let's say, 72 in mock test, Pearson's mock test, you will get around 77 or 80 in your actual test. Yeah, so what I tell people most of the times is just add five points to the score you get in mock test. That will give you a rough idea of how much you would get in the actual test. Regarding the test we have at Roman PT, the algorithm we use in Roman PT mock test is based on my own experience and experiments. And this is not something Pearson told me. This is just something I found through my countless experiments. So to answer your question, what I did was, I mostly did Pearson's actual test and Pearson's mock test. And most of the times what I did was when I would do mock test, I would just do one section, maybe just speaking, just reading, just listening and so on. And I kept doing this for almost 70 times. And then I just took note of my score in all attempts so that I could figure out myself how I was performing in a particular question and how that was changing my score in that section as well as the other section affected by that section. And based on all this analysis, I came up with the idea of how much a score each question type carries and how your score changes if, you, um, if your performance changes in a specific question type. So our scoring at Roman PT portal is based on that. Uh, and regarding its correlation with Pearson's score, in the actual test, again, the difference will be around three to five points. So if you have a score, let's say around 69 points in our, in our portal, your score maybe will be around 66 or maybe around 72. So there is a very good correlation with Pearson's actual test. Okay, then the next question is from Nitesh. And the question is this. My score in listening and writing is always around 60, but less than 65. Plus, my spelling is worse around 20 to 25. What should I focus on? You should focus on your spelling. Because your spelling can have big impact on your write from dictation question. In write from dictation, you don't get points unless your words are correctly spelled. And write from dictation is a very important question for both listening and writing. In listening, this question carries around 30 points and... It does carry the same points in writing as well. So if you are not good in spelling, you'll be losing a score in both of them. So how should you practice your spelling then? In your case, my suggestion would be practicing all the questions of write from dictation and making sure that you can spell all the words in those questions. While practicing, whenever you come across a word that you miss a spell, just note it down on a notebook so that at the end of your practice, you'll have a few words that you tend to miss a spell. Then you can only focus on those words and practice their spelling multiple times. In order to practice spelling using software and application, you can try Quizlet. 
you can search about Quizlet on our channel on YouTube channel where I have explained how you can use Quizlet to practice spelling or you can just do a general Google search and you can find more information about using Quizlet for your spelling practice. If you focus on your spelling next time you'll definitely cross 65. The next question is from Maruti and the question is can I know how much the pronunciation can impact reading and listening score? It does impact your reading and listening score because your pronunciation especially in read aloud can have impact on your reading score because read aloud carries a score for both reading as well as um, speaking. Then your pronunciation in questions like retail lecture, answer short question and repeat sentence can have impact on your listening score because this question, these questions or how much you score in these questions can have impact on listening score. But if you ask me uh, relatively how important pronunciation is for reading and for listening then I would say that pronunciation is more important for reading than for listening because people who tend to pronounce poorly tend to get less score in read aloud and thereby less score in reading as well. So if you are getting less score in pronunciation and less score in reading, most of the times the reason is read aloud and you should start practicing read aloud, especially the most frequently used words in read aloud and the most difficult to pronounce words in read aloud. All right, now we are almost reaching towards the end of our discussion and I'll take a few questions before I wrap up for today. Uh, the next question is from Ekta and the question is, Hi sir, I need 65 overall. I'm preparing at home, but I don't know where to start from at one. What to focus? So Ekta, as usual, start from the big four. Big four means the four most important questions for your test. And these questions are read aloud, repeat sentence, write from dictation and reading and writing, fill in the blanks. Together, these questions carry almost 50% of your score. So if you have got 45 out of 90, 50% of the score, now you have only 20 points left. And those 20 points you have to get only uh, get from 16 questions. So imagine this, you have 16 questions and from that, them you have to get only 20 points. It becomes extremely easier. Okay, the next question is from Manoj. Is there PT test score guide version 14? Yes, there is and let me show you that. This is October version, version 12. And there have been two more versions after that. So just give me a moment. Okay, there is one blog post and I think they have it here. If I can't find it now, maybe I'll just upload it to our blog and you can check it there as well. But let me try one more time. Okay. Okay, so I could not locate it right now, but I'll try it later. And if I find it, then I'll upload it to our website or maybe to our portal. Then let me take another question. How many marks only for write from dictation? So for write from dictation, we are looking at um, two sections separately. One is writing and another one is listening. 
uh, it carries more marks for writing for example and it carries around 30 points that's just a rough estimate in writing which is almost one third of the total score for writing that is 90 30 out of 90 would be one third and for listening also it carries somewhere from 30 to 40 points depending on the number of the questions and length of the sentence so it's a really important question so I guess we have come to the end of this and Manoj yes I also just quickly searched for it and Manoj is asking he could not find verse in 14 I also quickly searched for it and I could not find it now but if I find it later I will upload it uh, maybe I'll just tag it um, in the video in the description or maybe I'll upload it to our blog um, okay so we have we have discussed for almost 55 minutes now and I hope I have answered most of your confusions and questions thank you for watching until now all of you who could watch for this long um, and we'll soon have another session where perhaps we will be discussing reading questions especially reading uh, fill in the blanks questions and we'll be discussing actual exam questions and their answers i'll soon tell you more information more about the next session and those of you who have not signed up for our free course uh, on our portal please do so by going to romanpt.com slash pt online you can see that on the screen as well just go there and sign up for the free course signing up for the free course also means that uh, whenever i will send email mass email for uh, for the new free sessions you'll also get information about it and it will be easier for you to follow um, i think there are still a few questions coming up but uh, unfortunately guys i'll have to sign off now because i have other commitments now but of course if you have questions that i have not answered in the video then you can write in the comments because i do read comments and i do write answers to those comments as much as possible all the best for your upcoming exams i think exams are gradually opening now exam slots are gradually opening so make sure that you are fully prepared before going for the exam watch all the videos we have on our youtube channel and if you need to watch more videos you know that you can do so on our website there are different courses available so stay safe until that time and best of luck for your exam that's it for today